the private sector, the parliamentarian sector, the private sector, which is, and, the, and the civil society. I mean, there, uh, those parts have also to be looked at, which is, I think, uh, something what one is missing in the, in the uh, current uh, way of monitoring. And, uh, so the one has to go beyond the uh, governments and look at the others. Um, so what are, I think, most important from my point of view are the uh, types of uh, actions that are leading to graduation from the LDCs, uh, LDC specific issues. Okay? Now, uh, another issue is ownership, ownership by who? Ownership, uh, something which, uh, uh, it's a, not surprising, but something which I, to, uh, I point out, is that uh, in the, uh, the program of action, which is a joint, which is basically not only for developing for the LDCs, says the LDC should do that, but, but it is not as, uh, as uh, clear for the development partners for the LDC. The others are called upon to do something, called upon to support. Now, what support means is totally uh, unclear to me. How do they support things? So, for that, one has to find out, apart from the special support measures, there are other support. So, what is this support? So, a monitoring, in my mind, has to find out these types of the, the things which are not exactly mentioned in the program, but which have big uh, uh, impacts on the implementation of the program, like the, the uh, things which are outside the special support measures, things which are for support, and that has to be uh, identified by someone. Now, who does that? Uh, the UN is following, the UN is doing that of course, the monitoring, the uh, OHR is doing, and of course, with the portal, we have a very, very important uh, piece of information, source of information that we have to use. But we, I think we need some independent, some outside support for the monitoring, basically coming from academia. Now, that brings me to my uh, most important uh, <laughs> not criticism, but the most important point about this, uh, the LDC program of action, that people do not really care about the LDCs. People forget about the LDCs once the uh, conference is over. We looked uh, at one point at the, uh, for uh, the uh, development uh, assistance uh, organ, uh, the development assistance agencies of a lot of, I think, 30 odd countries. On none of them was LDC mentioned on the, on the, first, uh, on the first page. LDCs are not there. Africa is there, the poor countries are there, the low income countries are there, but the LDCs are not there. So there has to be a big publicity campaign of some sort to put the LDCs on people's agendas. Okay. Uh, if we agree, and I think whether we do that, uh, that's why we're here, that the LDCs have special needs People have to identify these. People have to be aware of these special needs. Uh, so I think that's a key thing. Other than if it is not the LDC specific issues, will not be will not be, uh, will, will not be uh, implemented. Uh, academia, LDC academia. This is uh, there is our friend Patrick Kiamon, who is the LDC person in India. Uh, I don't watch for because I was the, I went to one of the G20 development committee meetings, development group meetings, and three people from the most important three uh, donor countries had absolutely no idea that there was an LDC meeting coming up, that the LDCs in fact existed. So that I think is a, something which we have to undertake very, very with bigger. Uh, with a, with a bank. Get the academia interest in this, yeah, get the public opinion in this and that. Uh, it, okay, so I was going to talk about the key priorities, etc., but that which I've already said. Uh, the, uh, you know, one thing is there are so many actions that all these actions cannot be monitored. The people that started to do that at, at, at the beginning of the process plan of action, they had lists of all the actions, but those are impossible to uh, make sense. So therefore, any monitoring has to be done with a, uh, with a clustering, with a, uh, with a uh, academic uh, planning, academic organization, and 
to uh, see what one is monitoring. One can't monitor every single action there. First of all, it's not monitorable. Actions are not there. Training, but there's training in everything. So I think one has to uh, group things like that and look at what those are done. And the key thing is to find the, uh, the, the causality. Otherwise, we're really lost and we cannot really have uh, proposed things for the next time. As you can see, Professor Arda, the plant is uh, very, very long-standing research in the, on the commodities issues and with the LDC twist and with his current uh, engagements in the preparatory process of the LDCs has brought him to question the most fundamental thing, what do we monitor? I think that is a very, very basic question, what do we monitor? whether we monitor the inputs or we monitor the changes, the outcomes. And even if we monitor the changes, how we are sure that these are the changes brought about those inputs, the causality issue will come back. He has, of course, uh, alluded to many other institutional possibilities in this regard, and I would always fully agree with him, and I will try to bring them together towards the end, and I will not take away time from the person who has been a great partner, and I can see under his leadership at OECD Development Center, LDC priority is getting, gaining ground. Mario Pizzini will be speaking now. Mario Pizzini is the director of the OECD Development Center. As you all know, his bio is there. Uh, he, he had been uh, the, in the area of development for quite some time and been associated with a number of international institutions and have been focusing on these areas, including regional economics. So we are very, very happy that Mario Pizzini could come and join us today. Thank you, Chair, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you uh, to the partners of the event, the ICTSD, the CPD, the Commonwealth Secretariat, and obviously the SEF for being here, and thank you to the participants and the audience. Uh, I thought to be the last to speak has uh, some disadvantages because everybody has already been, uh, has said everything. And it has some advantages because everybody has said everything in the sense that uh, it allows me to go directly on the subject without any fear. And what I want to do is to uh, raise these three points with me. The first is what is the main issue we are dealing with, looking at the Brussels plan of action, uh, the lack of a good implementation and therefore suggest a need for additional action. Uh, my first suggestion would be to look at the G20, and third, what we can do in order to go in that direction. As I said, uh, one of the fundamental problems with the Brussels Plan of Action was a lack of good implementation, everybody has said it, uh, of follow-up and of monitoring mechanisms. In reality, this raises what uh, the first speaker said very clearly. We are dealing not only with what to do, but also how we do it. And both are extremely important. Together, we are assisting to all a series of cacophonia, as there are several actors interacting to each other, and a limited box of tools, as was said already. Uh, in particular, we believe that in order to address these different problems, we need to clarify what are the actors and not only the action that needs to be in the field. And we think and we believe that the G20 process would be a very useful mechanism in this respect in order to catalyze different actors together. And I think that these actors can include, obviously, the OECD Development Center, but I think all the organizers of this meeting. Therefore, let me go for, to the second point, why the G20? Well, the G20 development process is of particular interest to the poorest countries for several reasons. It seems to me that it has uh, put in place a specific, Measure, measurable and time-bound action plan 
in particular for work concerned and environmental protection. Secondly, it provides a very good mix at hand between the different countries involved in the process. I would synthesize this by saying it is representative in a certain sense and could have a certain operational efficiency. I am convinced that if we act appropriately, it can uh, be open to give voice to the LDCs. And uh, let me explain a little bit what I am doing. First of all, it is clear that the world has changed. Uh, Elmut Reisen, which is with me from the center, will explain the other parts of this conference how we are facing a shifting wealth and the center of gravity of the economy is moving Asia and is moving south. These changes that can be measured as we see that a series of countries, a large part of countries, in the last decade were coupled to a rate of growth that are more than the double of the average of the rate of growth of OECD. Therefore, there are new actors. If the world is changing and there are new actors, these new actors are asking to have a voice and to have a say in the debate. Uh, a large part of Africa trade <coughs> is now with emerging partners. Uh, over the last decade, the percentage of trade coming from new partners moved from 20% of the total trade in Africa to 40%. Therefore, India, uh, China, Turkey, Korea, Brazil, Argentina are much more present in the scenario of the least developed countries. And all the countries I've mentioned are now sitting in the G20. The perception that in Africa many least developed countries, we have recently studied and we will publish the result of the World Group of Month, say that the role of, the, of this new partner is crucial when it comes to infrastructure and innovation. Maybe the traditional supporter, the DAC member, uh, can provide good support in terms of governance, maybe, but when it comes to infrastructure and innovation, and in general, the source of growth is the new partner that played an important role. Therefore, if we want to address uh, an audience where the new actors together with the traditional one are sitting and are usual counterparts or potential counterparts of the least developed countries and probably we need to have a voice in that contest and a clear voice. Now, the third point I want to address is how can we build that voice? Who are the actors that need to be involved and that the actors that can knock at the door of the G20? Obviously, I will mention first for obvious reason of advertisement to my center, uh, but uh, there is something more than pure advertisement. In the last uh, years, we have tried to change the nature of the center in order to have a table at the center that is really a table putting together these different actors. At present, we have 25 OECD members, but we have 17 non-OECD members. And between the 17, there is India, there is Indonesia, there is South Africa, Brazil, Thailand, there is Morocco, there is Colombia. So our purpose is exactly to create that.